C sharp and Apache Kafka is a great combination when it comes to build event based asynchronous communication between microservices. We have developed our producer microservice in our previous tutorial, and in this tutorial, we are going to build our consumer microservice. Our consumer microservice is going to be a little bit, some sort of infrastructure in this case, that consists from multiple elements. We have consumer.service, we have consumer share it, consumer database, and consumer.api. Let me explain the role of these elements. This is our consumer infrastructure okay and this consumer infrastructure consists from four main elements we have consumer service that is going to be our worker service we'll learn how to build our worker service this worker service responsibility is to get information from apache kafka and store this information in our consumer.database consumer.database is going to be our shared database and using this database we'll be able to build our consumer api that reaches to this database and gets information. And using this API, we will be able to show the report information to our uh, users. And we have consumer shared that's going to be a shared library for us to store our shared functionality, store our shared models, and we will share this information between consumer API and consumer service. When dealing with microservices, it is always better to not to use shared database. But in our case, we are using shared database. Why? Because we have only integration at a database level. We don't have data ownership. We have logically decoupled services, but database is for all. And it means we have one massive schema that we don't have a manager for it. So on the neither left nor right service is going to be a manager for us. It is like a sharing infrastructure between your services. It is good because it is one of the simplest way of communication between microservices. It helps us to avoid middle item like using a service and it helps us to do fast development, no latency, and in most case, it has better performance. So we are using a shared database. And also my main purpose here is to show you how to develop a service using worker service template. But if you want to do a more proper development process, you can implement the following infrastructure. It is going to be the same, but the only thing will change is you will add worker service directly to your web api in your web api you will have one singleton background service that consumes data and writes it to the database and the same web api will take information from this database and provide for your user let me show you the full flow of our application. This is our microservice producer. And let's run this producer first to produce some data. But before that, let's check our Apache Kafka. And in our Apache Kafka using Kafka UI, we like that we have a topic called employee topic that consists from four messages okay and let's go to our employee application. This is our producer. Let's produce some data test name. Okay, test name and test surname. Great. Let's execute it. Let's remove this breakpoint. Continue. Okay, everything is okay. Now let's go to our Apache Kafka. And now we have five messages from the message list. We can't see that. We have all the required information here. And this is our previous data. And now you see this is our test name and test surname. Okay, now let's switch to consumer side and our consumer side to consumer data, we need to run our consumer service. This is our worker service that consumes data. So let's right click, debug, start new instance. Okay. So from the login, you will realize that we are pulling some information from Apache Kafka, we have some intervals. So this is our employee. So you see, we are getting all the employee information and inserting it to our database okay and it tries every three or four seconds depending from your configuration it tries to consume a data it checks if in our apache kafka we have new information or not and let's go to our consumer api debug start new instance and let's get our employee report okay 
this is our report API. Let's go for it. Let's try it out. We have uh, the only one get endpoint that returns all the information. Let's execute and see if we are able to get all the information. You see, we have, let's see, this is our test name, test surname, emp name, emp surname. This is our test data that we inserted to our database. So this is our consumer API that reaches to our shared database to get data that was consumed from our consumer service. Great, now it is time to start our development process. We have just a Decodebyte solution as a blank solution here. We'll develop everything from scratch. So if you want to follow me, just create a blank solution and to do the same development as I do here. Otherwise, you can just copy the GitHub branch and start to work on that. Okay, let's right click add new project. From the project, I will select first worker service. This is our background service, self-hosted service that's able to consume data from Apache Kafka. Worker service is a special type of project template that helps you to build your own hosted services. So you can move the background logic, long running complex logic to the worker service. In my case, for my microservice development, the consuming process, for example, I will implement consuming process for every three seconds. This is a bit complex operation so I'm moving this operation logic to the worker service. Okay, let's select this template and let's call it consumer.service. And let's select another folder called consumer. Great. Let's continue. I will select .NET 8 uh, long-term support temp mm, framework here. Let's create. Great. For the consumer service, as a worker service, we have special class called worker. This worker class is going to be inherited from background service, okay? This background service also implements a hosted service interface. For the iHosted service interface, we have start, stop, asynchronous functions, but uh, the background service uh, implements some sort of template matter pattern and it provides only execute functionality that will be managed by start stop operations okay and for the execute asynchronously what i'm going to do i'm just going to uh, consume data every three seconds let's go for it tools nugget package manager you can use uh, nugget package manager ui interface i love just using the uh, cli version okay let's go for it and let's type install package confluent.kafka. Let's install it. Cool. Great. And we need a uh, store to consume data. Uh, for the consuming data, let's first build our consumer config. Okay. Consumer config consumer config yep for the con this is approximately same sort of pattern like we implemented in our producer for the producing data you need to provide your first producer config then using producer builder your build your producer and start producing the same pattern is applicable for consumer also we are first building our consumer config Okay, and using consumer config, we are building our consumer, original consumer. And at the end, we are implementing the functionality we need like subscribe and consuming. Okay, for the consumer config, I need to provide, of course, bootstrap server. This is our mandatory property that needs to be filled. We have our client id this is cl this client id we will use for debugging purpose um, my consumer client client and we have of course group id my consumer my let's call it employee consumer group let me tell you about the consumer group. This consumer group helps you to uh, build multiple consumers that will help you to consume data from your application 
and in this case these consumers together will help you to parallelize the reading process and in a fast and a distributed manner you will consume data from apache kafka okay uh, otherwise if you are building four five different consumers and not grouping them then it means you will have five six different consumers that are not grouped and they will consume all data but I need to parallelize the consuming process and to make sure that, the, you know, for example, let's say you have a thousands data in Apache Kafka, one consumer will be able to consume this data. But if you want to spread this thousand data between your five, six consumers, you need to provide the same group ID for your consumers. OK, I guess that's for now enough for us. And let's start building our consumer itself. So war consumer, let's instantiate our consumer builder. We now that we have information as a string string in our Apache Kafka, this is really important. You should specify the same type pattern that you provided in your producer. While our producer used string string for key and value, we should use string string for our consumer also. Okay, and let's provide our consumer builder and let's build it. Of course, with using great. And to consume a data, you need first to subscribe to the topic. Okay, let's subscribe to the topic. Consumer dot subscribe. And the topic is employee topic. And to consume a data, you just need to call consume functionality for the consume functionality we have some sort of overloads here like providing cancellation token milliseconds timeout and we have time span let's use the time span from seconds and i want to get data from apache kafka every three seconds okay war consumed data let's just format it and it is possible for us to not to have data in our Apache Kafka. It means consumer data will be empty, will be just null. So let's check it. The consumer data is not null. If it is not null, what should we do? We should just insert data to our database. Okay. Great. We have consumer data in our consumed data. We have message dot value that represents the exact serialized data. First, we need to deserialize it. Let's deserialize it. War employee employee because we have employee information there. So JSON serializer dot serialize and uh, let's provide employee here unfortunately we don't have this employee you just need to copy the employee record from your producer and paste it here and i will provide another project here that's going to be our library the shared library and we'll use this shared library between our web api and consumer service because we'll use this employee in our web api also let's go for class library and now a consumer let's call it consumer dot share it next dot net eight yes Let's just delete this, right click, add new class, call it employee, employee, great. And it is going to be public record employee, public grid ID, get in it. So we have name with init and we have 
public string surname in it. Okay, and let's of course construct it. And let's provide our create ID name and you can use more simplified template here but for any case it is possible for us to add some sort of validation for that reason i'm providing this template okay id name surname let's remove unused namespaces here and uh, let's add reference to this employee first let's okay let's just first try to build and see if everything is working from the consumer service right click at project reference add the reference to consumer shared okay and let's add our employee here cool and let's see what's wrong here cannot convert string okay this is our string of course we need to use deserialize great okay now we have employee information what we need to do we need to provide uh, this employee to our database we need to build our database in this case so uh, i will use the same database for my web api and for my consumer share it for that reason i'm just going to right click add new project class library next let's provide the path consumer okay the same but anyway okay and consumer dot database great dot net eight cool and in my case i'm just going to remove this folder right click add folder database or we don't need this database because we have already the database in our project name let's right click at class employee report db context okay this is our db context this is going to be public we need to inherit from the db context db context okay cool and we need to provide the constructor it should be db context options employee report db context db context options for the base let's provide these options here and we need to have public db set employee report let's call it employee report reports okay we just need to install um the entity framework here okay and let's just comment it out for now tools nugget package manager install package Microsoft Entity Framework Core dot SQL Server. Oops, I have installed it. Not to a correct project. Anyway, let's run it. Okay. Now we have we should have DB context. Okay, let's comment it like this. And let's using and for the employee report we need to have folder called entities right click at class employee report and for the employee report i'm approximately going to have the same sort of model here for that reason let's just copy this paste it here and just add public grid employee id get in it and grid um, employee id okay 
and employee ID to employee ID. Why? Because it is possible for us to get multiple events from the same employee ID. Okay. For example, for the given employee, it is possible to change address, to change name, to change middle name. So we'll get the same employee ID. For that reason, to make this table unique, I'm providing this ID. Okay. Great. Now we have all the required information. Let's just add employee report using here let's remove unused namespaces cool now we have our consumer database but from the consumer service we need to configure that we want to access to this database okay first we need to go our program cs and after this create application builder let's provide services add db context and of course let's add reference to our database first and let's call a report db employee report db context okay for the option option dot use sql server you can just read configuration from app settings and provide it. This is your task to do. We have a lot of uh, refactoring cases you need to do. For example, in my case, for the worker, we need to move this consumer config to the configuration. Of course, this is also should be in our configuration. You are able to do a lot of interesting refactoring here. Just do it share your branch with me and i will check your branch and estimate it out of 100 that's uh, going to be your homework okay and for the database i'm going to data source initial catalog um consumer report db uh integrated security sspi i think that's for now okay trust certificate also i will add but let's go for it and now we have a the database let's just inject it let's go to the worker private read only db context okay if you think you need to have additional abstraction over employer report db context you can go for it just create your repository where you think you need to have a service over this database just create your service implementation also but for now i'm just using a uh, plenty entity framework uh db context here um, okay this is our employee report db context cool come on and now we have employee db context for the db context what i need to do i should provide reports dot add of course employee report reports dot come on so in my case let's see this is our db context at employee report we need to provide this employee report here okay war employer report let's construct it using employee report this is not to be context but report there is our employee report class entities employee report okay we need to have this employee report employee report let's make it public Okay, come on. Cool. 
And for the employee report, I'm going to provide new ID. For the employee, we have employee ID. For the name, we have employee name. And we have employee surname. Let me to like this to make a better readability here. Great. And that's all. We are adding employee report and of course, employee DB context, save changes, asynchronously awaitable. Cool. Let's just well, first run our application. Let's run our consumer service to see what type of exceptions we will get. Of course, we should get exception from the database perspective, I guess. Some services are not able to construct. Of course, our worker requires singleton DB. So let's go for it. Add. So the service lifetime is going to be service lifetime is going to be a single tone. If you want to master Apache Kafka to learn it from A to Z, then my Apache Kafka for distributed systems course on Udemy is absolutely for you. This course covers every aspect of Apache Kafka We'll start from the installation process of Apache Kafka. We'll dive into details of cluster, brokers, topics, partitions, producers, and consumers. We'll learn more about producers and consumers to build safe and high performance producer and consumers. We'll learn about consumer groups, how to configure them. And also we have a lot of interesting advanced Kafka topics. At the end, we'll try to apply our knowledge to build our distributed .NET applications. This course is language agnostic and it means you will be able to apply this knowledge to C Sharp, Java, Python and any modern programming language you want. Let's do some additional logging here, okay? And for the logging purpose, I'm just going to remove this delay from here there is no need to use that okay and for the consumer i will provide just else paste it nothing to consume nothing to consume okay we don't have anything to consume and let's just format it and after employee let's add that consuming employee and let's provide this employee of course uh we need first to create our database okay to create a database uh you can just manual to do it or you can just use tools nugget package manager package manager console specify your consumer service and just run install package microsoft entity framework core tools okay okay and add migration initial let's hit enter it's because i haven't specified the proper uh, database here so consumer service doesn't match your migration assembly either change the target project or change your migration assembly. okay let's do it first let's go to the change consumer database here we have consumer service as a startup service and we should specify consumer database because our database is in our database configuration. All the stuff related to Ant framework is in our consumer database. Let's try it again. Great. 
and let's just update database. Let's hit enter. Oops, so you see, we have some issues to connect to database. Let's wait for it. So do we have SSL provider. Yeah, we need to provide trusted connection from the configuration. Let's go for it. And here you see we have the data service, the data source, initial catalog, integrated security, and we need to specify our trusted connection. Okay, let's just type trust server certificate equal to true. And let's try the operation again. Update database, let's wait for it. Okay, keyword not supported, trust server certificate. Trust, sorry, yep. Cool, now we have migrated data. Trust server certificate equal to true will resolve this issue. Let me show you one interesting stuff here. When I run this application, it will not be possible for me to consume any data. But in my topic, so you see this is my employee topic, I have eight messages. But the system said that nothing to consume. Why? Because we have two sort of messages here. One for after consumer connected, the others are before consumer connected. So we created these messages before our consumer connected. So it is not possible for our consumer to read it. To make them readable, you just need to provide additional configuration called auto offset resets earliest. Okay. It means I want to read earliest messages. It will read also the latest messages. But if you select latest, this is a default behavior that will read the messages only created after your consumer connected. Okay. The other refactoring here is going to be to move this while because I don't want to create consumer every time while the cancellation token not requested. Okay. That seems okay. And let's change our group ID because in our uh, Apache Kafka, we already have this group information. And for the given group information, we already have lag data. So I, oh, I will create a separate tutorial that describes it. But for now, just let's change it. So it is going to be my consumer group. Um, okay like just my consumer group let's see if we have this sort of uh consumer group here no let's just run it and this should be able to consume data so let's wait for it and you see the consuming is successfully done so this is our insert processes and nothing to consume let's go to our consumer list so you see my consumer group is here let's go to topics employee topic go to messages we have produce message here i want to test if it is possible for us in a runtime to catch the produced messages okay let's just copy the template from here I'm just calling it name one, surname one. Let's use this ID here, paste it here. Now we have nothing to consume, nothing to consume. And let's just publish and voila, we have name one and surname one consumed. So far, we developed our consumer service that's responsible for consuming data from our Apache Kafka. We developed our consumer database and consumer share it. Now it is time to build consumer API. This is going to be our web API and it is responsibility is to provide consumer data for our third part services, our clients. Okay. Let's right click add new project from new project. Let's select ASP.NET Core Web API. And let's add our path, consumer, our folder, and it is going to be consumer.api. Okay, let's use the default settings here from the template. Let's remove 
weather forecast. Let's change our controller to report controller. Let's remove unused data from here. We'll return an employee information, of course, and let's call it get employees. We don't need this name here for now. And what I want to do, I need to inject our database. For that reason, I will just add reference to the database. And plus, I will share it because I will return not employee report, but employee information, okay? Report the employee report DB context, okay? Let's just simply call it DB context. Let's just copy this inject from the constructor db context to db context and we'll return employee let's add reference to our employee okay this is going to be asynchronous operation so let's wrap it to task if you want to learn more about task we have a great tutorial about c sharp tasks just check it to learn more Okay, and let's just use db context reports select new employee. Okay, let's do projection directly here. X dot employee ID, x dot name, x dot surname, and of course to list asynchronously and it is going to be a weightable operation cool and let's use our constructor mechanism here i think yes primary constructor okay and from the program cs let's inject our database builder services add db context employer report db context and for the options, let's provide options dot use SQL server. Okay, let's go to consumer service from the program CS. Let's just copy our database credentials and paste it here. Of course, the better option here is to use app settings to read configuration. This is your task to do it to refactor this application. Okay, and what else? Let's go to our uh, controller now. See, I think everything is okay. For the logger, let's just log some information that um, reading all not reading, but getting all consumer data. To run our application, we need to right click, set a startup project, debug, start without debugging. Let's run it and see if everything is working. Go to report, try, execute. Yes, we have invariant culturally supported in globalization invariant mode. Okay, let's just fix it from the invariant globalization in your project settings. Just change it to false. Let's try to run application again. Let's go to report, try, execute. And voila, we have all the required information. What I want to do, I just want to check if it is possible for us to check all the life cycle so let's just run our consumer service let's go to our apache kafka let's run our kafka ui go to topics employee topic okay so you see nothing to consume let's just consume some data i'm just going to copy the template from here produce a message Let's paste it here. Um, some name, not some name, but some surname here. Some name here. Okay, let's just copy to the ID and let's produce and see. Yes, producing is successfully done. Now let's go our API. We have 
this sort of information. Let's just execute again. Let's search for some information. Yes, we have some name and some surname. So everything is working. That's how we are implementing our consumer using C Sharp and Apache Kafka.